Thanks to the supporters of channel member Chris Tierney. Well, here we go then, boys and girls. The new season begins. We've done pretty much nothing in the way of transfers, which on the one hand is good, because it means we didn't lose Pedro Luis, but we've also not strengthened a team that only just won the Premier League last year and just wasn't good enough in the Champions League. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we develop over the course of this season. I suspect an injury to Pedro Luis will be disastrous. But all the young players are a year older. I don't I don't know how this season's gonna go. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 35 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games of the season. We're away against Watford and at home against Wolves. If you didn't see the transfer special yesterday. I mean, you didn't, you didn't really miss much in terms of transfers. Paviot signed for us permanently, having made his Portugal debut over the summer as well. I've got a little piece of hair that's falling down at the front, which is really true. It's haircut time. Haircut o'clock. We need another haircut. Can't have bits of hair falling forward. Uh, but Paviot signed permanently. We won the Community Shield, just. We weren't particularly spectacular in that game. But other than that, no transfers happened. The media think that we're going to be finishing in seventh place. So looking at European qualification again, but not really where you would want to be as defending champions. We don't have anybody in the Dream Eleven. Pedro Luis is closest, but uh, Tamang and Mbappe still ahead of him on that list. Interestingly, so Tamang is considered the second best player in the Premier League. I'm looking for Mbappe on this list. He actually appears... Oh, it's not that he's below... It's not that he's below Pedro Luis, it's that Manchester City have two players better than him, which is terrifying in itself. <laughs> um, at least we've got a reasonably easy start to the season. Watford, Wolves, Bournemouth. We're starting with the best dynamics we've ever started a season with, so it could just start really, really nicely. Or we could be okay, but then hit Man United, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea in four consecutive Premier League games at the same time the Champions League is kicking in. And it could all start to go wrong pretty quickly, especially if that co coincides with a Pedro Luis injury. At no point previously in our time at Norwich have we been this reliant on one player. Pedro Luis has been our best player for a while, but previously we've always had a little bit more strength in depth. Although it's the same four up front that we had last season, Tammy Abraham is, uh, is in decline now. Gaza hasn't yet made the step up. Casolari is still Casolari. Obviously, Alvarez moved on last year. I'm not at all confident that we have goals in us if Pedro Luis isn't in the team. So it's imperative that we keep him fit and don't sell him. Juventus are now sniffing around, but fingers crossed we've got enough oomph about us to be able to keep him away from Juventus. But I guess time will tell. Famous last words. This is the team then for the first day in the new season. Has a very familiar feel to it because we didn't sign anybody new. So Hoy and Hall in goal, a back four of Erinua, Mura, Fernandez, and Paviot. Navarro at the base of the midfield. Janicek and Tipple ahead of him. Schultz behind Tammy Abraham and Pedro Luis. Janicek is only fit to play 45 minutes of football, so we'll keep an eye on him. We are a little bit light in central midfield in general with uh, both Asa Walsh and Haruna both being grumpy boys over the summer. Um, I guess we could start Zamorano in there, but... You know I'm a big Janicek fan, so we'll play Janicek from the start and swap him out for Zamorano at half time. And these early games are all about just getting these players fit for the new season anyway. Really, we want to be hitting form around about the time the Champions League begins. It's nice to get... I, I mean, it's dangerous talking like this when the game can hear me, but it is nice to get a relatively easy start to the league season. Please let it turn out to be that. Pedro Luis to Schultz. Janicek, this is lovely. One-touch football. Luis hits the uh, inside of the post and it kind of bounces back out and Watford deal with it. But that was some, there was four or five passes there that were just little one-touch passes that absolutely ripped Watford apart. But unfortunately, didn't end in a goal. And now it is Watford who are on the attack. Um, Livramento, if, if that's Tino Livramento, presumably, um, still got, what are we, season 12 now? And he's still plugging away? He was a star of non-league legend like four years ago. He's been around a while 
and still playing in the Premier League now. Um, Tipple trying to close down on this left-hand side, but Watford working the ball around nicely. We could do with winning the ball back here. They've got in, beh in behind us. I think that's offside. I'm looking at the referee, glaring at the referee from my vantage point here at the top of the stand, and digital me is glaring from over there. And the double glare didn't work. The goal has been given. And this is what I was worried about. An iffy start. I mean, it's such a... Such a... Ugh, goal to concede as well. Just head tennis leading to the chance. And it's, it's frustrating to concede a goal in that manner. We're going to demand more straight away. We lose to Watford on the first day. I start to become a little bit worried about this season. I always worry... We talked about it a little bit in the video yesterday. I always worry when we have a summer where we don't make any transfers. It just feels a little bit too much like resting on your laurels and not improving a team. And in our, in our case, it might even be worse than not improving the team. It depends if the players around him have improved by more than Tammy Abraham has declined as he's got older. We could actually be a slightly worse team now than we were at the start of last season. Which is not what you want, really, is it? Everyone else makes all these signings to try and get better, and we're there because we've got no money, just desperately trying to tread water and stay where we are. It's very negative talk for 45... I'm supposed to take Janicek off. Very negative talk for 45 minutes into a season where we are defending champions and won the league by six points, but... The, on the flip side of that, we are losing to Watford. So, you know, uh, Tammy Abraham, back to Ua, and now Navarro and Fernandez. We've taken it all the way back to our defenders here. I hope we're about to conjure something magical up by doing this. Aaron Ua's got him behind again here. Can he slide it across goal? He's gone for the shot himself when really he should be squaring that to Pedro Luis, who is free in the middle. Um, got to question the decision making a little bit there. And we're going to do some encouragement because that's the last time we're encouraging. It's demanding more from here on in. But sometimes the boys do respond to encouragement. And Pedro Luis hits the crossbar from the corner. Posh have scored three goals in their return to the Premier League, which is lovely to see. Certainly that first time we got promoted all those years ago, goals were very hard to come by. So maybe, maybe Posh will actually survive this year, which would be very nice. Uh, Fernandez playing it across to Mura. And now Navarro. Substitutions are incoming. We're just going to let this move play out first. Lovely work from Aaron Ur on the left-hand side. He finds the cross this time. Pedro Luis is there. And his header once again, not quite where we'd want it to be. We're getting chances. He's getting chances today. And we are not converting them. We're going to bring um, Griffin Diaz on to play in midfield. Shuffle around like that. And then I think we bring Gaza on for Tammy and see if he's become a big boy over the summer. Maybe he's been here a year now. Maybe he's developed enough to really step up and be that be that striker option that we're looking for. That would be that would be the dream if he really develops into being our second striker this season. He's the one with all the potential. So we want him to push on and become a star this year. Likewise Griffin Diaz, he's another player who if we can get some of these fringe players with loads of potential to step up and become brilliant because for once I've not brought players in over the top of them, it could end up all being for the best what we've done this summer um, or not done this summer. Paviot then on the right-hand side crosses to Schultz and Colin Schultz is there with the goal, the equaliser. And I talked about it yesterday that if Gaza doesn't become the second striker, maybe Schultz will. He needs to add a few more goals to his game before I risk playing him up front. But he scored in the Community Shield. He's scored again here. And if he continues to, to show those kind of finishing instincts, it won't be long before he's partnering Pedro Luis and Gilberto Carlos or Yedro coming to the team behind the two of them to form a new look front three. So with 10, 15 minutes to go in this game, we are going to stay attacking. We are looking to win the match and draw away against Watford. He's not really what we're here for. We want the win. And we have another highlight here immediately after the goal. It's Murrah playing it forward to Paviot who was dangerous on the right-hand side as part of that previous move. And now Pedro Luis, very wide, but has Gaza in the middle. If he can find him, he does. Gaza in acres of space, has all the time in the world to control it and pick his spot 
And it is a first goal of the season for Rodrigo Garza. And hopefully, that'll be the making of him. It's a beautiful cross from Pedro Luis. I don't know what Watford are doing, giving Garza so much time. But he just picked his spot, played it into that bottom corner, and has run off doing the chicken dance. It's it's wonderful stuff all round from everybody involved. We're going to just drop back to a positive mentality now. What a turnaround we've had with these substitutions that we've made. Watford won, Norwich two, and Gaza has his goal. And, I mean, I am all for him and Schultz spending the first couple of weeks of this season having a goal-scoring competition to see who's going to be Pedro Luiz's partner. I am absolutely here for that. Here is Schultz, one of the two contestants in the goal-scoring competition. Paviot now on the right again who has been very lively in this second half. Tipple to Eranua, and he shoots from range and rattles the crossbar. He's hit that with some welly. It's back with Paviot again on the right-hand side, who's done well to keep hold of the ball. Floats it over, looking for Diaz. Can't find him. Schultz has now got it on the edge of the area. And now Zamorano again to Schultz. Eranua is just going to try and use his pace to get into another crossing position. It's exactly what he does. It's a terrible cross through. It goes out of play before it even gets to the penalty area, I think. But... He's just so quick and powerful that he gets himself into those positions that he really doesn't have any right to be into. So it doesn't matter that his crossing's a little bit iffy because he'll deliver so many crosses over the course of a match because he can get himself into positions that other people just won't. Still 2-1, couple of minutes to go in the game and it looks like Peterborough are winning as well. I mean, it was 3-3 last time I checked. So they've not only won, but they've won in style, banging in some goals. I don't even know if they've appointed a new permanent manager yet. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer leaving them um, midway through or towards the end of the summer. Um, right, what button do I need to press to see what's going on at Peterborough? So, Vic Horton, Houghton. Um, I'm going to assume, was I there in 2027? Did I bring him in as head of youth development? He's the caretaker manager. I think I was probably there then. Well, there you go. Right. We've made hard work of it, but we have won on the first day of the new season. Let's go do it again. Right. We have a plan, boys and girls. Um, I don't know if it's a plan that will work. This could be a, the same sort of thing as I did in the transfer special, um, where I thought I had a striker and then we couldn't actually get the striker. Um, but we had a big offer for Haruna. So Haruna has gone to Leganes. For a ridiculous £22 million, and they're paying him £140,000 a week. Which to me seems insane. This is a guy who's played less than 20 games for us in the last three years. And they're paying him £140,000 a week. But that's given us a little bit of, of kitty to play with. Um, we've got £8 million. So, I immediately went back to Sergio Delgado, the guy that we've got earmarked as the Pedro Luis replacement long-term, the one who's lightning quick with great composure and great finishing. Um, he's a very similar player to Pedro Luis, so I'm not certain they can play together. If we sign him, we'll figure it out. That feels like a nice problem to have. Oh, how do you get two really great strikers to play together? We'll figure it out. Um, but we've made an offer for him, which is £12.5 million up front, for a deal totaling £100 million. £67 million on instalments, £10 million after 50 league games, £10 million after 50 league goals, plus a 30% uh, of profit sell-on. But obviously we need £12.5 million up front to be able to get that deal to go through, which we don't have. But then we got an offer for Vincenzo Casolare from Milan of £22.5 million. So I've immediately put him on the transfer list as well to try and force him to accept the Milan offer. Brighton have now also come in and offered a similar amount. So if Casolare goes for £22.5 million, with our 40% retained transfer revenue, these are just flat £22.5 millions. So that, to me, adds another eight and a bit million to the kitty, which means we'd have £16 million question then is how much how much up front I mean obviously we've got the 12 and a half million up front there but as part of his contract how much are we going to have to give him are we going to be able to afford it so contract offer 6 million I mean it's going to be touch and go and we're only going to know after casolare has gone it's so risky 
But, I mean, it's got to be worth the gamble. Because if we can get Delgado, that's problem solved then. We've got Delgado, Pedro Luis, Gaza as the youngster, Tammy Abraham with one more year as the as the guy doing the mentoring. And that seems to me like a sensible thing to do. In fact, talking of mentoring, I don't think I've touched mentoring for several seasons. Let's add some mentoring in, shall we? Oh, God. Um, I mean, we probably need to fiddle with this properly off camera because I don't know that Tammy Abraham mentoring Asa Walsh and Gilberto Carlos is the most useful thing he could be doing. Um, but then, to be fair, Pedro Luis is with Schultz and Diaz and Tipple is with Gaza and Yedro. I mean, straight away, can we just drag these from group to group? All right. See, this is the thing you have to really faff around with it. But to me, you get Diaz working with Tipple because they play in exactly the same position. And then Tammy should be working with Gaza. We'll figure it out. We don't need to we don't need to deal with that now. At least what we've got now is better than nothing. We made a couple of changes to the team for the Wolves game as well. Casolare's come in really to put himself in the shop window and him to come in, bag a couple of goals and have Brighton and Milan be like, yeah, we really, really want him now. Um, so hopefully he comes in and does that. Zamorano's coming back in in midfield um, because Zamorano energy, you know, I like Zamorano energy. I mean, I like them both. If I, I need to find a way to squeeze Zamorano and Janicek into the same team. Uh, and I know the obvious way to do that is to drop Navarro. But I, despite the fact he's not great at big games, I do like him sitting there in front of the back four. I think he's more defensively sound than Zamorano is most of the time. As long as we're not playing against anybody good. Against Wolves, Navarro should be fine, he says. He's already picked up a yellow card. Watch him give away an own goal and then get sent off. That's probably what we're about to witness. Uh, Peterborough, still up in fourth place. What is going on at, at the Teddy Sheringham Arena in Leicester? Which I'm recording this before I've had the answers as to what that's all about. So if you didn't tell me yesterday, please tell me today. What's that all about? I don't get it. If you didn't... Oh, Casolare has got his goal. This is what we wanted. Casolare puts us 1-0 up. And then, I mean, he needs to now pull up a shirt saying, Milan, come and get me. The alternative is Atalanta coming in to try and get him so that we can bring Julian Alvarez back as part of a swap deal. That works too. If we could get enough money to sign Delgado plus get Alvarez back, that would be double dreamland with bells on. But that's probably asking a little bit too much. But we are 1-0 up at half time. Thanks to Vincenzo Casolari. I'm not going to worry just yet that Pedro Luis hasn't scored this season. But this is our third game and Pedro Luis hasn't scored yet this season. And it's not that he's not getting chances. We're getting a lot of shots. We've had massive XG in every game. I think he's just fluffing his lines a lot. Maybe bringing in Delgado is exactly what he needs. Perhaps he's realised at the same time as I've realised that he is our most important player and we absolutely desperately need him and he doesn't really need to try, which wouldn't be great. Considering he's our captain, it's not a great attitude for him to have. So hopefully that's not what's happening. And we're making a couple of changes in midfield, getting Diaz and Janacek on in there for a little bit more energy. I think my final change will be taking off Casolare. I think the, the fans know what's going on. And despite the fact he's never been a regular starter, Casolare has been an important part of this Norwich revolution. He's been here four or five years now. I would like him to get the standing ovation, the goodbye, because we we hoped he would end up more than he is. But I've described him before as like our Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. He's our super sub. He's always good for a goal off the bench. And I will miss him. I would like to keep him around. But I'd rather bring Delgado in. So I think we are going to... We'll do... Should we bring, we're going to bring on Gaza. We're going to do a changing of the guard. Casolare was our, was our backup, was our super sub. Gaza's going to assume that role. And uh, we looks like we've picked up another narrow 1-0 victory when you'd like to think we would... We, I mean, all three of these games this season, Community Shield included, we should have done better than we have. We're scraping by and picking up points. We are not clicking yet this season, though. And I do worry, as soon as we play against somebody good, it might, might be a bit of a problem. Um, there you go. We are scouting Julian Alvarez because we'd love to bring him home. He's out of contract at the end of the season. Don't be surprised at all if he comes back in the summer after his two-year holiday in Italy, banging in goals, having the best goal returns of his career, apart from when he was down in the championship. Um, oh, Palasconis. 
He's now a world-class midfielder. See, I knew what I was doing, bringing him into Peterborough. We might have brought him in a little young. He's now a world-class midfielder playing for Dortmund. Yes, we'll give him a full scout. We obviously, we're not in a position to bring him in now. But one day, maybe. He's still only 23. Obviously, he was better than Asa Walsh, who came in at the same time. Right, that is your lot for today. Hopefully, tomorrow, you get to meet Sergio Delgado in a Norwich shirt. That's what we're all hoping for. But the deal could all fall apart just yet. And we've still got 10 days of transfer window left for Pedro Luis to depart. That'll be just my luck. We get Delgado in and then we get the big offer from PSG or Real Madrid or somebody for Luis. And we end up just doing a like-for-like -like swap and losing Casolare, which wouldn't be ideal. But we should have some Champions League for you tomorrow as well. Hopefully an easier group than last year. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.